Peace, y'all. Before we get started, I felt compelled to remind everyone to stay safe and stay abreast of all the atrocities happening around the world. The people of Palestine, Tigray, Congo, Sudan, Haiti, and countless other territories are currently fighting for their rights and their lives. And if you're choosing to take action, please take every precaution you can. Stay hydrated, stay in groups, cover your face, and please, more than anything, don't lose hope. I've been leaving links to organizations and resources at the bottom of every episode description for a good minute, so please go check those out for places to donate and to find ways to take action today. We're not free until all oppressed people in the States and abroad are free. Much love, stay strong, and stay dangerous. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guests this week are California producer Clown Cat and New York rapper Sun Mundy. We spoke about Poor Things, Oppenheimer, Ponyo and the Greater Studio Ghibli filmography, Max Keeble's Big Move, the influence of Earl Sweatshirt, Navy Blue, Dilla, and Ka, finding the creative voices, bending to suit each other's styles, and the creative process behind their debut collaboration, Lived and Born. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to, uh, welcome back to whatever, 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 uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know the number episode this is. I stopped keeping track of those a while ago, but this is like this is like the third or fourth late night edition of Real Notes. We love a late night edition of Real Notes. Um, my name is Dylan Green, Cinema Sai. Uh, got a lot of names, do a lot of shit. I'm also sort of Baja Blast right now, so I'm a little, so I'm so I'm like a tiny bit amped. But welcome, peace to y'all. Thanks for everybody for listening. Um, I hope you're safe, free Palestine, and um Tigray and Haiti and Congo and Sudan um none of us are free until everyone's free solidarity to all the solidarity to all the students holding it down they're making us adults look like pussies shout out to y'all love you um but I'm with two people today who um who make incredible music and have been really climbing for quite some time but have really been hitting strides in these 2020s um, they put out a really fantastic album that I got the chance to write about um, over at uh, my other job at this other place, and it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty cool, <laughs> you know. Like I was really happy to get to do some cool stuff with it. But like, forget me. This is this is about them. We got Sun Wendy. We got Clown Cat, um, Kingston's finest, just outside of residential San Diego area's <laughs> finest. <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they call him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, no, I know that's right. But yeah, no, we got Comcat and some Wendy in the house today. Um, lived and born has been out for quite a while, and um, it's been living with me a ton. I hope it's been living with you all the time. If you, if it isn't, if it isn't, I hope it is after this. Um, y'all, thank you so much for being here. It really fucking means the world to me. Man, thank you. Holy shit. Yeah, right. I appreciate you reaching out. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. Yo, you you showed so much love, man. We we appreciate it. Fun. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, no, like I knew, like I knew from the time that Aura said this to me, I was like, yeah, like I, like I made it halfway through, and I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is it, because I was already on, 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 on. We got in touch around the time that um, um, you and um, on Ruli's project came out. Mm-hmm. I'm already blinking on the name. Don't go outside. There we go. Um, when Don't Go Outside came out, and that's when I first got hit, and I was like, yeah, this is, and then, and, and then you said we lived and born, and. That was it, you know. I, you know, like I did the deep dive as you know as deep as we could go, and yeah, you know, like getting to meet Marcus in person at the thing he did with Shamar back at Wonderville was, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a fan here tonight. So this is, this is, this is a treat for me. So thank y'all for being here. Yeah, much love, man. Hell yeah. Um, so let me ask you. Let me ask all the first question I ask everybody who comes on here, which is, um, what was the last movie or TV show that both of y'all watched and you had a strong opinion about? Are right, you want to go or me? Um, you could go first. Um, I mean, as far as TV shows, bro, I watch Barry. Yeah, shit is amazing. Have you seen that? Not yet. It's oh been my on goodness, my list forever. bro, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it's like the next level up from like if you like Dexter, bro. Barry is so fucking good. Um, I don't know. I just love that show. It's like um, I put that in a tier with like shows like Atlanta, 
but mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just got that like unique tone. Like, it's got a, it's yeah. got like a, like a weight, but also like a comedy. Like at the most unexpected times. Um, and yeah, that show I've been fucking with so much. I love it. Um, and as far as movies, yo, Poor Things blew me away. Ah, uh, what'd you see? Uh, I saw it. I think I saw it like around the time it came out. I saw it in a small, like theater we go to this like vintage like very old like small vintage theater like a town away from um a town away from us so yeah. um yeah i just kind of saw it in like a pretty like intimate like theater and that shit was incredible on like every possible front um like visually visually it was like probably the craziest movie i've seen um the story was amazing i don't know dude everything was and willem D- I, I fucking love willem dafoe Emma Stone, yeah. Emma Stone, like I'm, she, that was like her, her best role for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah, love that. Uh, yeah. The movie, you yeah, know, the movie's tough. I saw it. Um, I saw it around the same. I saw it around the time it came out too. Mm-hmm. I, I've been meaning to. I've been meaning to run it back because, as much as I loved it, like there's so much going on, like especially visually, that I almost feel. I, I almost feel like I didn't get to like. I just know that's gonna be one that I'm gonna appreciate way more on the second watch. Than I yeah. did on the first, and I already appreciated it so much. Um, um, I think I've mentioned this on the pod before, but I'm I'm, I'm a fan of the director, and um, he and Emma, um, the guy's name is Yorgos Lanthimos. He's a Greek director. Um, him and Emma Stone made made a movie back in 2018 called The Favorite, with um, uh, Rachel Weisz and Olivia Coleman. They're like they're in like a love triangle in like the 18th century. Olivia Coleman's the queen, and the other two are assistants. Movies very wild, but um, but, but yeah, no man, four things, four things is crazy. Like just like the visuals are nuts. It's really like a, like I feel like I've mentioned this too, but just like, it's like a, uh, it's like a, it's like a pop up book for adults. That's kind of the way I like to think about it. That's a great like, description. That's so true, man. It's so fun. Like it's so like bubbly. Like at times it's so bubbly. Mm-hmm. Like and at times it's so like, bro. When she goes out of that like whatever like that like hotel or like that like i don't even know what it is when she goes and sees like the like under the like third the like enslaved people or whatever you know yeah what that, yeah yeah that yeah. was crazy that scene was insane um yeah yeah that movie captures your attention in like every possible way aren't they speaking of that director aren't they doing like another like a, isn't he didn't he announce like another one with yeah i I think I think they shot it like if, 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 like if it wasn't back to back, they were it was like really really close mm-hmm. on some um like what uh uh T West was trying to do with um the X and uh, uh, no on um, Pearl and Maxine I don't know I I don't I don't know if either of y'all are familiar with X Pearl and Maxine but um they're uh um um, um I think X might have come out like two three years ago and then Pearl came out. No, Pearl came out two years ago. X came out three years ago, but like T West kind of did all three of them pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think he might have done X and Pearl back to back or something. But anyway, yeah, I'm excited about the next one. Um, uh, Emma Stone's great. I'm just happy she's. I'm happy she's back and um not playing Pacific Islanders in movies anymore. You know, <laughs> because 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 that did that did happen at one point, and I'm, she thought people forgot. But but yeah, no, Poor Things is great. Four things was tight. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy that uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, uh, Ara, what about you? Uh, honestly, the last movie that kind of that I had a strong opinion on was Oppenheimer. Uh, it was like the first quote unquote. <laughs> I, I know it's the first quote unquote like long movie I saw. Um, uh-huh. but just the the way it was shot and like the storytelling of it, I I haven't watched anything like it. Um, and it's a very producer thing to say, but the soundtrack too. I love it. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, no, this you know, the soundtrack's gorgeous. It was um uh Bro who works with uh Donald Glover, uh Luger Gorenson did this did, did mm-hmm. the for it. And um like I lo- like I loved like technically gorgeous movie. Soundtrack's beautiful, cinematography's great, the mm-hmm. direction was I mean, I got feelings about Christopher Nolan, but I think he did a great job with the direction. Um I I liked the movie. I thought it was cool. I haven't thought about it since I've seen it. I, I, I like, like I left being like that was cool. I saw it in like thirty five millimeter and shit, and I was like, this is this, this is this is cool. And I was just like, like white dudes doing bad things and being sad about it is something that like 
if it's well done enough, I'm gonna watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> but it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, know, like, yeah. but like I can't like just like the bomb sequence nuts. Like mm-hmm. just, just like, like I, I was high as shit in the movie theater. That it was crazy. <laughs> How crowded was it when you saw it? Uh, not many people. It was like a week or two after release. Mm-hmm. It was like yeah, maybe like four ro- rows filled. I was there with my friends. <laughs> that's cool as hell. Yeah, yeah, no, like, like that's a that's also a crazy movie to see with friends. I like when I saw it. I saw it. I just, I just, I just saw it. Like I think I might have seen it. Uh, I might have seen it like the Monday or the Tuesday after it came out because I think I was yeah I was I was gonna do Barbenheimer that's it I was gonna do Barbenheimer mm-hmm. but I was in Chicago when they came out so I saw Barbie three hours before I hopped in my plane and then I saw um, Oppenheimer when I got home but what was it like seeing that with people like uh, that's was, a... <laughs> my my friends they they didn't catch anything like about it but I, I'm glad I I kind of stuck through it. For, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was it was just super interesting because I, mean, I grew up watching like Master of Disguise and like some Studio Ghibli movies. So it's like I, I was super limited in my movie taste. So that was definitely a big switch. That's incredible. Okay, so okay, yeah. Now let's just go right to that because we've never talked about the Master of Disguise on here, and I always ask first movie. I'm gonna ask the question just to say it, but like. First movie experience you, y'all can remember having. It could be at the theater. It could be at your cousin house, et cetera, et cetera. Talk to me about your relationship with the master of disguise. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was incredible. I, I was sleeping over at a cousin's house, and she she put on master of disguise, and I swear to God, I was like eight, and I we, we watched it three times back over. It was so funny. <laughs> and then I totally forgot about it until, like, last year, and then I got baked, and I watched, and I couldn't stop laughing. Wow. It, was, it was, yeah, I'm, I'm very immature for that, but. It was amazing. Fuck it, bro. I mean, I'm, I mean, like, I mean, like, happiness is in short supply. So, like, whatever <laughs> makes you happy, son. Like, honestly, it's crazy. This, this is coming up because, um, I was just talking to my partner about Dana Carvey. Like recently, his name just came up randomly, and they were just like, "Oh yeah, like Dana Carvey's like really funny." And then it made me think, like, "Oh yeah," like because like, <sighs> um, I'm trying to remember when The Master of Disguise came out. But I, I might have seen that shit for my birthday. Or like some friend's birthday, like when I was like a kid, kid, kid. Like it was like early two thousands, maybe even yeah. late nineties. So like I was, I was, I was, like I couldn't have been older than like ten when that shit came out. So like I haven't seen it since then, but I remember like the trailer was everywhere. <laughs> the, turtle, the, the turtle club was like yeah, and, yeah. And that, that was the one. You know, like, you would go to school and everybody would be talking about am I not turtly enough for the like. <laughs> Like you, you unlock some memories, son. <laughs> yeah, I've this movie in like fifteen years. That shit is crazy. <laughs> it's a very good movie. I love it. So where, so where did you watch it? Is it available to stream? Because I might, I might watch that shit in the next couple of days. Honestly, uh, I, I just watched it on a random website that you can watch free movies on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll go do my one, two, three movies. We'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Solar movies. Shout out solar movies. Yeah, yeah. definitely. They, yeah, no. See, you see, you just put me on. That, word. That's our word. There's, yeah, that's that's the source. <laughs> before before we before we move on to Marcus, um, you also um, Ari, you also mentioned um, Studio Ghibli stuff. What was um, what were some of those? Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, mm-hmm. uh, Ponyo, and Spirited Away. Those those mm-hmm. three definitely stuck with me. Man, good... shit. Um, wow. Yeah, no. Nah, Kiki, you know, Kiki's one of my favorites. I love Ponyo. I don't know that I consider it a fake. I, I love all those movies, man. I'm, 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 I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm such a mark for all of that type of shit. Like any, any, anything Ghibli, anything Miyazaki. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm anime. I'm, 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 I'm otaku boy. Like I'm such a mark for all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the first one I ever saw was um. Mononoke, Princess Mononoke was the first Ghibli movie I ever saw, and that shit. I don't think I've seen that one. I, I definitely need to watch a ton more movies <laughs> than I do. No, oh, of course, but like I mean, like those those three are great. You said Ponyo, you said Kiki's Delivery Service, and Spirit of the Way. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, like to me, Spirit of the Way is like that's the that's the one. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like that's like if you've seen any of them, you've seen that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and they just um 
uh, AMC was just showing those. I think they're doing like a Ghibli fest. Like, like, like I, I noticed every year they do like Studio Ghibli fest at AMC theaters, like over the summer, where they'll like show they'll show all the movies in theaters for like a weekend. It'll, it'll be like one in, uh, and they'll do like Porco Rosso and then Spirited Away and um, uh, whichever other ones, Ponyo, um, The Wind Rises, which I just watched for the first time. Uh, I think earlier this year. Um. The, the um yeah like they're all you really can't go wrong with any of them they're 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 all there's like a hierarchy but they're all at least very good you know definitely type shit but um uh marcus what about you what, 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 what's, what's your earliest memory um i think my earliest memory like just period i don't know if, i mean i'm sure i don't actually remember this but like maybe it was my first dream i remember but like being like a very 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 young kid like young like I don't know if this was like a dream I had of me being like two or something like <laughs> sitting on my mom's lap in a movie theater watching like a poke some Pokemon movie. I like I'm sure it was like a dream or like something that I've like completely made up. But as far as like actually watching, I remember watching like um, Spider-Man, the Spider-Man movies, the Tobey Maguire joints on like my like mom's like on my parents bed. Like I remember watching that. <laughs> I watched it over and over. That was my jam um i think i also i think maybe before that i watched like spy kids like i mm -hmm. definitely was a big spy kids um child um and i fucked dude that movie was trippy that was a trippy movie that was a trippy huge movie to get into movies like like you know what i mean like it's a yeah. it was kind of funny but um i definitely um i definitely dug that um but yeah like spider-man was like my young movie like that was my go that was my shit for sure mm. um yeah and Ghibli too. Like I definitely Spirited Away was definitely the first Ghibli movie I saw. Um, and I, me and my brothers always used to do the thing where um, the scene where she was on the bridge with uh, with the dude who was like helping her get into the like whatever, yeah, and yeah, she yeah. would uh, like blow the like whatever the you know or, or he whatever he did it. I don't know. I don't really remember that scene. Oh, my brothers yeah. would always be like, and we would always like do that to each other. <laughs> but um, yeah, studio yeah, uh, Ghibli movies definitely. Um, were a big part of my childhood for sure yeah it's 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 a uh, yeah it's kind of wild because i think the first one i've ever heard of was spirited away but i never got to because like it, it got nominated for an oscar that year that's why i heard about it and then oh, i mean like i just had a bunch of people who were like onto the ship before i was and they would tell me about it but then i never got to like actually watch one of the joints until it was uh the end of middle school when i saw mononoke and that's when i was like it was like mononoke and i don't know if either y'all have seen akira before but like them two were the ones like i liked anime before that but those two i was out of here i was like this is give me all of this like i started mainlining shit after that but um but i'm, but I'm glad you brought up the spider-man the um the toby mcguire one because yeah pivotal 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 i'm sad i missed because i know they just re-released those three too and i'm and, and i wanted to see i wanted to see one of them but i didn't get the chance to catch them in theaters Oh shit! In theaters, damn man, yeah. I would love, I would love to catch those in theaters. I I I um, you were talking about the how they put Ghibli movies back in theaters. Like, um, I watched like they did that at um, you know, a spot very close to me. Um, and my wife and I just went and like every Saturday I watched a different Ghibli movie at the theater and it was so fire. Um, yeah, those you know those are classic. Those are like timeless. Um, Ponyo, Ponyo is definitely my shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I watched Ponyo a bunch. That's a good that one. That was the first one I saw. Where it got me hooked. That's a great one, man. Um, yeah. Uh, See, Kiki's was fire too. What's up? Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt. No, you good. You good. Um, yeah, no, like Ponyo. The thing that the thing that I loved about Ponyo so much, it really, uh, it made me realize how good Miyazaki is and, and his team are like drawing water, like water in his movies, <laughs> like just the way it like flows. It, it's just. It's so gorgeous, man. I don't, I don't know how to put it. Sometimes I don't know how to put it into words, but just like the way the ocean looks and like the way like the, you know, it's like the, I'm, I'm just like the plants and the, and, and, and the animals and the water, like it just looks, they really just made it. They, they found a way to make it look so real. And yeah. like, it's one of those things I love about animation where like drawing things out as opposed to like see like, animation to me has always been almost like a little bit realer than real life because it's like a person's interpretation of what the world mm. looks like so like that's mm. it's, it's, it's like somebody putting 
their thoughts on paper. And like that to me is almost as real as like seeing y'all or seeing Marcus because I can't see ours face, but like seeing y'all in front of me, you know, like it, it's, I don't know, it, it's like a perspective thing. Like when you see somebody or like if somebody has like a distinct facial feature, like if they have like a crazy, like prominent brow or like a mark on their face, and like you can draw that and kind of draw attention to it in the way that it would be in your mind. So I, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I think about this a lot. I think those Julie movies in particular are like really good at bringing those out. Just like the little details, like uh, um, Bro's arm in Mononoke when it gets like super buff, like when it gets like infected with the spirit and even down to like the way Ponyo looks like in her face and like when she's mm -hmm. got like the little, like, little chicken feet. Like, like he's just, like her. walking on the wall, like running on the water. Like you can, it's yeah. so like, well, yeah, no, those, those movies, like, play on your senses so beautifully, mm -hmm. like, yo, the most, like, mem one of the most memorable scenes is, like, in Spirited Away when her parents start, like, eating at the buffet, and it's, like, they have yeah. all this, like, like, food, and it's, like, steaming, and it's, like, it looks so good, but then they, like, fucking become pigs, it's, like, it's it's such a memorable, like, sensory, like, image, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, those, 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 um, even, like, the way they, like, eat, like, even just, like, the way the characters eat in these movies is so, like, I don't know you can yeah i i know what you mean like the the animations like like emphasize like the senses that we have it's beautiful it's mm -hmm. they're, they're visually like crazy yeah no, like yeah oh, oh i i can't believe you forgot to i didn't, I didn't mention this did either of y'all see the boy and the heron yet the yeah. last Miyazaki movie yeah unfortunately not oh it was man crazy. it was crazy yo you know what i mean stupid stupid takeaway but one small thing i loved was how willem dafoe he just popped in played a dying played a dying heron and then popped out that was willem <laughs> dafoe's like role in the movie i thought that was so so far but the movie was incredible dude the fucking beginning scene where he's running through the like burning city mm -hmm. was so sick it was so like i don't know it's just visceral but yeah, yeah. That, that movie was crazy yeah, so I saw it. I actually didn't get to see. Um, I um, um I saw it in Japanese with English subtitles because the homies wanted to see it in Japanese with English. Shout, shout out to Carl and Mark if they're listening. But like, um, yeah, no, like the thing that got me when I saw the trailers, I um, I initially thought that Willem Dafoe was like the heron who was like chilling with the boy, but that's fucking Robert Pattinson. <laughs> insane that's that's an insane his vocal his vocal range as an actor is kind of crazy yeah like oh, he yeah. somebody somebody interviewed him and he mentioned that he mentioned that he like recorded all his like like, like like i think he took like a weekend to like figure out the voice and then recorded all his lines in like two hours and just like sent them like that's wild um i i don't even know what to say you know like he's 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 turned into something really interesting but i bring that up because um, I didn't get to hear. Well, I, I, like I saw it in Japanese, so I didn't get to hear any of the. I want to watch it in English, and it's very rare that I feel like that. But I want to. That, that's when I gotta hear. I gotta hear that one though. It's a it's crazy. Like, the dub. It's a crazy cast, you know. Like yeah, it's got like a. It's got yeah, like uh, Defoe, uh, Patson. Um, I think Florence you know, Pugh is in it too. Florence Pugh. Um, may, maybe Christian. I don't know if Christian Bale's in. I don't know. There's like mad like. A listers on that. Um, yeah, no, nah, great, great movie though. Yeah, and um, there were, oh, okay, two other things. One, there was a, I read some Vulture article recently that was talking about how like there's like a there's like an emphasis on like poop and fecal matter and like shit throughout the whole movie because it's like a bunch of birds, and like and, 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 like I thought about it and like there really is like a like like i like i couldn't explain it i'll i'll like link the article i'll send it to y'all and link it for everybody else so they can go read it because it's like really interesting but just like how how like waste is kind of like a thematic element in the movie and like it, it com comes down to the poop and then there's um my favorite scene in the whole movie is when uh son first comes back from uh he comes back from like the bird afterlife like architect in the matrix type world or whatever and then like his dad sees him and he takes out his sword and he runs at him while the birds fly in his face and he's like swinging the, just just like the way the movement is and it's, it's just so gorgeous and then the birds shit all over son while he's like trying to cut him up with the sword i i i just i just love miyazaki man like you can tell that he like lives life and like is in nature a lot 
not even just because of all like the thematic stuff but like just the way things move and feel like you said it's just Mm. so textural and yeah i I, i'm i love i love miyazaki i could talk about him for hours yeah no they're so like playful like the movies are so play like they're so some of the like the themes end up being so like there's like so much weight to these fucking themes and it's about like you know like spirits who like can't like finish leaving like the human realm but then it's also like you know there's like a theme of like birds shitting up you know what i mean it's just so yeah funny. <laughs> but um they're also yeah there's like a cuteness to the movies too you know what i mean like there's so much cuteness in the movies which is under an underrated like element definitely yeah it's 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 like cute and weird all at the same thing he's he's just really good at that i don't know i've, I've always appreciated that about miyazaki um i'm a big loop on the third fan too and i think he, his first movie he ever directed was the was like the first loop on the third movie which is which is pretty i i, I think it's the castle of the Oscar, but it's dope either way um yeah just just very good shit um so as the both of y'all get older and have more life experiences was there was there a movie that either you saw that you would say was your first encounter with like a capital M movie? Like in the sense of like something that really like connected with you in either in an artistic, emotional, or like spirit just like something that was more than just like this is 90 minutes of entertainment. Like or it could just be like 90 minutes of sublime entertainment, you know? Like you can take that however you want. Hmm. All right, what do you think? That's a really good question. Um, I don't think I've had many of those moments with movies besides the the Studio Ghibli ones, mm-hmm. if, if I'm, if I'm going to be real. But that was like when I was like 10 to 12. And then I had like a long stint of not watching movies for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I think those definitely, I don't know, as you said, like the, the little things like like the water and like the, the, the sort of textures and filters used on the actual film, I don't know, it just... I really resonated with that. Yeah, I feel you. So yeah, no, yeah. Actually, I wanna, I wanna dive a little bit more into your relationship with Ponyo. Like, what? Because it seems like it's your favorite. What was um? When was the first time you watched it? And like, what did you? What else did you walk away from that one? What else did you walk away from that one with specifically? I think definitely the visuals, beyond everything, it just it, it's insanely like like kind of like cool but vibrant and mm-hmm. it just i don't know it was just very very pleasing to look at um as far as like catching what what the actual movie was about i don't think i caught much though because i did watch it when i was like a kid of course yeah yeah no and like that's uh that's another thing i love about i love about jimmy movies they just work on that level like you don't even have to like you don't even have to like really think about all the other shit that's happening just they, they're just beautiful movies to look at and sometimes a movie can just be beautiful to look at, you know, like that could just be like, you know, like film is a visual medium, which is something I feel like, uh, I feel like we can forget that sometimes, like things can just like look cool and that can be enough, you know, it doesn't have to like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I just, I, I, I appreciate that answer because it's honest and like the movie is gorgeous. Like I'll never forget the first time I saw the trailer and was just like, Oh yeah. it, it's it's, 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 it's yeah no it's a gorgeous movie but um marcus what about you um i'm thinking like uh fucking i i loved max keebler's big move as a kid bro because that movie like i would watch it and then i would like think i was him i'd be like i would like thought i was like okay i need to be like him because he was so cool i love that movie like i just remember the like scene i think with like a crazy food fight like, I don't know, that movie was just so fun. And I think, you know, that movie, like, resonated with me in the sense that, like, it gave me, like, now when I watch a movie, like, I almost, like, I don't, like, judge the value of the movie. But, like, you know, you, like, walk away from a movie and you're, like, impacted for, like, days after. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you have that, like, yeah, short-term, yeah, yeah. like, impact from a movie. I think that was probably the first movie that gave me that kind of short-term, like, like, I don't know, it just kind of like resonates and it keeps going. But that movie was that movie went hard. Also, I think same era, like Big Fat Liar. Wow. Oh, okay. That's hard. I think that was Paul Giamatti. Was Paul yeah, Giamatti? That, that was Paul Giamatti. Yeah, yeah, where he stole the kids like script or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, because like yeah, you know, like they Disney came to him movie. with the uh, they came to him with the idea and then um 
it was uh, Frankie Muniz and Amanda Bynes. They go to the movie and they see the trailer and they're like, this motherfucker stole our idea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Such a ninety, such a like an early two thousands like slash nine or whatever that shit came out. Uh, that might have been that, that might have been O two because I, I had to be I had because I saw it. That also might have been that might have been something else I saw for somebody's birthday. Like like going to the movies for birthdays was a was a really big thing. I did a lot as a kid, I guess. But like that that yeah, wow. I haven't thought about Big Fat Liar since because uh, I, I think the movie just turned twenty. I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure. So it, so, so it might have been like O two. Or, or, or it must have been like 2004. Maybe it was last year. It doesn't matter. Um, but wow, Big Fat Liar and Max yeah. Keebler's Max Keebler's Big Move. Um, I might need to rewatch Max Keebler's Big Move, man. That was the one. Yeah, that was it, the fire. It's it's definitely on Disney Plus. Um, yeah. So I think this is the second time this has come up on here because my homie, uh, Liz Morpheus brought it up too. The Frog fucked me up as a kid. The Blue Bulls or whatever the fuck his name was. The Scottish frog that the bully hated, and he had, and like he was like scared of the frog, oh, and like, yes. like and like and like the theme song, and like, because like there's the, the one scene I always remember, because like the whole thing in Max Keeble, um, I can't remember if it's Keeble or Keebler, like the elves. Oh, maybe it's Keeble. Maybe I'm totally bugging on his Keeble. Either, so, it, either way. Either way. Either way. Um, like his whole thing for people who might not have seen it, like the kid was like not popular. And he was about to move to a different town. So he was like, I'm going to just fuck with everybody who was ever giving me any grief for it. Like, I think he, like, tried to go for, like, the girl he had a crush on. He decided to, like, go after, like, the bully. And, like, the bully was scared of this big mascot from this, from this TV show. Like, a Scottish frog with bagpipes who would sing a theme song. <laughs> and he trapped the bully in the gym with the guy in the, in the suit. And, like, the bully is just, like, freaking out in front of this fucking frog. Nah, that's crazy, because you straight up, that you unlocked that. I forgot about that shit. And I remember I remember how, like, dramatic it was. Like, it got, like, dark. And it, yeah. Oh, uh, that, was, that was a total, like, tone shift in the movie. I completely yeah. forgot about that scene. That's crazy. Horrifying, man. That that was, like, D- D- Disney Disney was on some shit in the early 2000s. Those, those and, like, all those Disney Channel originals were just... Like, I don't know. They, 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 they had, they had a, I don't know if they had good drugs. They had drugs. They, they had, had drugs. drugs. We can say that with confidence. They definitely yeah. had drugs at their disposal, for sure. Not, ex- not exactly the kind that, like, the Rocco's Modern Life people had, but, like, in, 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 in the same ballpark, I, I, mean, sure. I would have to guess. Wow, yeah, no, yeah, no, Max, 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 Max Keeble's big move might be the, I think, yeah, it's got to happen. Yeah. yeah, you got you. You got to let me know when you watch it again. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's fucking insane. So, um, so so let's do okay. Let's do the same with music for the both of y'all. Um, what like when did music become capital M music for y'all in the sense of it going from being like a passive thing to something? Not even so much like you making it, but like you being like fascinated by music. Like when did that first happen for the both of y'all? Um, I, I, I could start it. Um, to be oh. honest, it's, uh, it's when quarantine, like first hit, um, I was inside, I had like, you know, nothing to do. I, I was a bit on rap talk, you know, uh, posting my, my Earl sweatshirt rankings. And yeah, you know, I, I love music at that point. But, um, right when I started getting like involved with, with more of the music community, I started getting put on like different, uh, albums, like in the airplane over the sea i remember that one really shifting my view on what an album could be and then from there really just delving in into more more stuff like that um mm-hmm. yeah but definitely in the airplane over the sea really struck a chord that death consciousness too oh the fucking neutral milk hotel album i was yeah, like where do i yeah. know this title from okay yeah wow yeah no nah, i got yeah i got into i heard that album once when i was in college and I fell in love with it, but I never revisited it ever. But yeah, it was like, a phase for me too. I feel because like that cover, that cover is so ill. Like I love the image mm-hmm. of just like this woman with like I always thought it was like a drum face. I don't know what the fuck that is. I think it's like face. potato. People say it's a potato. I mean, I, it could be a who potato. Knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? But like striking image, and like that's. I don't know, like, to me, I remember first seeing that cover and being like, I want to know what that's all about. And I listened to it, and I was like, it's a cool album. But, um, you know, like, cover cover art's impor- it's always been important to me. Like, mm-hmm. that's a... But now that... Okay, but now that you mentioned... What's your favorite Earl album, bro? 
uh, some rap songs. It has to be. I had like the biggest, biggest phase of it ever. Oh my god! Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 amazing. That was like I could like I could feel the gears turning in my brain when that was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, right, and like I've been, and, you know, like I've been a fan. I've been a fan of Tebe, and then since like since like right around the time um, his first tape came out, like I watched like the whole Odd Future thing happen from the jump. So it was it was uh, really cool to see him go from from Earl to um, Doris to we, we we know we know the chronology, um, but like yeah, I mean that album was really special to me too because um well um, one of my best friends uh, Spence shout out to Spence if he's listening uh, moved to North Carolina like the day that album came out. Um, so that was kind of like a damn, my best friend's gone, like an album oh. <laughs> for me. Um, but like, just I don't know, like the sound and the way that he, the way that all of them came together to. Yo, my fault. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to shout out the all new Real Notes Patreon page real quick. If you're looking for ways to connect and directly support the podcast, the Real Notes Patreon is the best way to do so. For as little as $5 a month, you can gain early day before access to every forthcoming episode of Real Notes, as well as an invite to the Real Notes Discord server, where you can talk to others about the latest and greatest in movies and music, come through for some listening sessions, and talk about whatever else is on your mind. I know I'm going to be talking a bunch. If you feel like coming up off a little bit more, you can get cool exclusive content, like audio from Real Notes Live and Real Talk interviews. Those will be exclusive to patrons and ticket holders moving forward access to retro versions of my 60 second minute made movie reviews and even a monthly writing and podcasting workshop hosted by me regular episodes will still be available on a weekly basis anywhere you get your podcast but if you want the extras you got to come out them pockets a bit check us out at patreon.com slash real notes that's r-e-e-l-n-o-t-e-s i appreciate your consideration and support more than you know now let's get back to talking Because I mean, like at that point, it was very clear. It was very clear that he was pulling influence from Mike and them, and mm -hmm. like seeing them, seeing seeing them like really actively working together, where everybody is now. You know, like Earl and his Earl and his uh, Earl and his short hair, tight fade, jean shorts era is pretty <laughs> fucking crazy. Barbecue, like, yeah. like with, with the fucking wow, friends. Love. <laughs> no, like that shit was like parties on barbecue. Okay. Love it, man. Like that was like like that's what he looked like. Like that's what he looked like when he first came out. Like minus mm -hmm. the minus kind of like the spiky, like Chucky hair a little bit, you know. Like that. So it's 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 weird to see him kind of back at square one. But um, but yeah, no, like for but as much as I love SRS. If I had to pick a favorite, it'd probably be I don't like shit on the mm -hmm. wrong side. Mm -hmm. You you can't go wrong with any yeah. to be honest. Like, yeah, that the, yeah, like that was I, that might have come out a year after I left college. And uh I saw no, my partner and I, Desiree, saw the Doris tour where we, um with uh Rat King opening for him. And like mm -hmm. yeah, I I yeah, but like I don't like the, the I don't like shit tour was I think it was uh I think uh, Anderson. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Open for them. I missed their set. I was upset about it, but um, that, that's crazy. It it, it 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 hurt my soul. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, that album just like that album's so comfortable. So it, mm -hmm. it's weird to think of that album as like a comfortable album, but like that's like I throw that on like this hoodie. Like it's it's I I, I know it very well. Mm -hmm. so I think, but but like SRS is right there. They're 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 damn near neck and neck. So. Yo, when Nowhere to Go came out, like when the, when he dropped that as a single, mm -hmm. that like cover art, dude. I remember, I remember like bugging out at that song, because that that song was so different. Like for him, like yeah. when he dropped that, like that yeah. song was so different. And I was, mm -hmm. yeah, that album is. I mean, I think that's an important. That's obviously an important album in the in the like fucking zeitgeist of like rap at this point. Like, yeah. like so many people have like cited that as like an inspiration. Um, yeah, that that shit was amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it, it, it yeah, it unlocked a lot for everybody, I think. And you know, like obviously like it didn't create what we have right now, but I think it played a huge role in introducing people to that kind of sound. Yeah. Like I think that's undeniable. Like that like he kind of shined a light on things that were already happening. Like, but it, it but it's uh I don't know, like see, seeing seeing its seeing its legacy already start to grow and like people kind of even people like coming around to it, I don't know. Like that's a 
that's a, that's a whole other conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. um, but before we move on to you, Marcus, what's your favorite Earl album? My favorite Earl album. Um, I mean, honestly, it's probably SRS or fucking. Um, I did probably listen to I don't like shit the most. Um, grief. I played grief so mm-hmm. many times, and I'll still bump that song occasionally today. Mm-hmm. Um, also like. I think that was probably the first time I heard Vince Staples and like that feature was sick. Um, oh, whoa, right? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, song. that shit was crazy. Um, <clears throat> I think I'd probably go with, yeah, probably some rap songs, honestly. Um, but lately I've been, <clears throat> I like haven't really been into like listening to his like live, you know, he has like a whole vault of like music that he like kind of only plays live and it's like he's like party. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, it's bittersweet because I'm like, what, I just have to like listen to this on YouTube? I'm like, I'll do it. And bro, I, I I started like going down the rabbit hole of like listening to his like shit that he only does live and it's it's so crazy. It makes me so sad because I'm like, he's probably not gonna like drop this for real, for real. Like I don't know. Cause like some of it is so old. Like he has so many bangers that like seem very old you know but, yeah you know i don't know <laughs> yeah you know i get it because there's like there's so many i forget the one that was originally that, that, that like i guess was called black emperor but oh, it uh, was on check. it was on voyeur deer what's it called again heat check right right no 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 no, no it wasn't heat check it was a uh, i think i actually ha- i actually have the original um i have the oh, original really? track list on my phone somewhere because um somebody sent it to me off the what's it called uh where is it? It's going to take me. Oh, here. No, oh, wait. No, here it is. Uh, it's uh, My Brother the Wind. That was it. My mm. Brother the Wind. Um, yeah, because like that was originally Black Emperor. And then there was like some, there, there was like one song on, um, there was that Cookies song that wound up on uh, Feet of Clay. I loved it. It was like that and whatever the second one was that he did at Flogna like three, four years ago. Like, I, yeah, I get it. You know, yeah. just like, just like, like, like that was like, like I treated, I treated the original version of My Brother the Wind like Pissy Pepper when I first heard it. Like those, like those two were like some of my favorite leaks of anything I've ever heard. Like, yeah. they, yeah. went triple, they went triple platinum on my YouTube. That's all I'm gonna say. Or, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the one that I'm listening to right now, like I'm like looping, like uh, Heaven Knows, I think it's called. Um, I don't. I think it. I don't know who produced it, but I don't know. I, I'll, I'll I'll shoot it to you uh, after, but that's the one that I'm like, man. I'm like so sad that it's probably never gonna like actually come out. But Earl's so fucking good, man. Oh, sick, yeah. sick. I like, I like like so many songs on sick, but I think I was a little like thrown off by how like, um, how not like all over the place, but like you know how he's mm-hmm. like, you don't know. I feel like he covered like a lot of ground, but I kind of like covered less in a more deep way, like almost. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But 2010, I, 2010 is still yeah. 2010 is amazing. Oh my god. I I got I got to give it up to Black Noise at all times. He's um I think I think he's one of our most underappreciated out. Mm-hmm. That Obliv- that Oblivion album he put out was fucking crazy. Like I listen I I actually still listen to that pretty often. That like, like the Baby Mother song on there is one of her best songs ever. One of his best songs ever. Um the Danny Brown yeah just like I love mm-hmm. like his his range is stupid, you know. Yeah, like shout sure. out to Black Noise um but uh oh shit um but what was but but talk to me about your start with music marcus like when did when did things really start to come together for you and in, in terms of like fascination yeah um i think uh well my, my brothers i have two older brothers and they're they were both into like hardcore back in the day they were into like you know i went through the like pop punk phase like with them mm-hmm. um but like i think the thing that stuck with me from then i think like Amer- listening to American football was definitely like hell yeah. yeah I you know I went through that phase. Like <laughs> I used to love I used to love American football. I listened to a lot of Owen, um, who uh I think he was part of American football, but um I think that like kind of started getting me like really tuned in to like um I don't know, just like the more like the like emotional capacity that music can like you know like bring out in you like American football, I listen to, like, Basement so much. I love, like, Title Fight. Um, so, like, I don't know. Those, like, early, like, kind of, I don't know. That's kind of a, a different, like, range of shit. But, like, Title Fight is fucking sick. Um, yeah. I, I, I honestly think my, like, love for rap, though, 
started in like high key in 2017. Like when I first heard Rock Marciano, I feel like my brain, that's the year my brain turned on. Like <laughs> when I first started listening to Rock Marciano and then Ka, you know, yeah. I'm trying to beat the fucking, you know, you know, you know we're trying to beat the, the white and low allegations. You know? Hey man. <laughs> on it, on it, on it. <laughs> but um yeah, I think I think 2017 is when I became like a music addict. Right now, I'm a music addict for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but I think it started then with rock, like Rosebud, uh, Rosebud's Revenge, uh, first one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that shit uh, definitely lives in my brain still to this day. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that Marksman song with him and Ka on that album is amazing. Love that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, whole album's great, but but yeah, nah, like hardcore. See. I've, yeah, like you're not the first person I've had on here who also kind of had who kind of like started with like the hardcore shit and then moved over moved over to rap. Like, yeah, I love American football. I love that first album. It really like that and like that and like modern baseball were like two really big ones for me because like I I I discovered them both around college. Again, I I, I actually think modern baseball came to my college one year. Okay. So like see so like hearing them play was. Hearing them play was a lot of fun, and and um and on uh, my roommate at the time, Corey. Shout out to shout out to Corey. Corey Corey was really into Converge, so like he got me into Converge, and, oh, wow. and yeah, just that whole um yeah, just that whole that whole. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you exactly on on all of that stuff. Like it, wow. like I kind of came into rap first, and then found everything else after. Okay. But like, but like that's uh yeah, that stuff's very close to my heart. Or Tiger's Jaw? I don't know if you ever listened to Tiger's Jaw. Never. I've heard of Tiger's Jaw. I've never listened to Tiger's Jaw. Where they were in that in that like realm for sure, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, good shit, man. Um, so uh before um before we get into y'all's journeys and then we move to the album proper, um, what uh I feel like I haven't been asking this question a lot, but I'm so curious, like with the on, on with y'all in particular, was there ever a period of time when the two of you Re- like realize that film and music are two things that could complement one another and that could happen in any particular way like it could be like a it could be like a needle drop in a soundtrack or like the way like an image syncs up with music or whatever like something like that does that ever happen for either of y'all um it, it really connected with me when when i didn't like hearing movie samples in songs but uh, watching movies, I don't think I really got got that much of a like a music connection to it. But definitely with with how a movie like clip can change the story of the song. So, it, it, so so is there a specific one of those? Oh, that's a good question. Off the top of my head, oh shit, probably not right now. But okay, hmm. yeah, I'm not too sure. That's cool. Yeah, no, like there's like there's so many. There there's a there, there's even I I don't know which one specifically. I'm not I'm 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 not I'm not that clever, but there's a couple there's a couple there's a couple on Love Them Born, actually. Like there's at least yeah, like like there's at least two I could think of. Um that I like. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I mean, A, I don't know, but even if I did, I wouldn't blow up your spot or anything like that. But, um, Mad Vilney, actually. That that is the one I was thinking about. Mad Vilney's definitely it like all the, the voice clips definitely adds to the album. Mm, yeah. My 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 favorite on that villainy would have to be the um the America's most blunted shit, like at the mm-hmm. very end with the little yeah. instructional thing. But like yeah, it increases creativity <laughs> yeah. eight to eleven times. Like, <laughs> like like every time that song came on, like me and my homies would just look at each other and just go, M A R I J U. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's my Amazing. Shit. Man, what what a what a album! Jesus Christ, um, Marcus, what about you? Um, I mean, I, I I just thinking back to like I don't know, back in the day, like uh, fucking Nightmare Before Christmas. Yo, the music, the music on that movie is just so so legendary. Yeah, uh, Danny, Dan, what's his name? Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Yeah, who I le- only later in life realized is responsible for so many, so like I think he did. Spider, I think he did like the early Spider Man's too. He's done so many fucking movies, bro. I mean, yeah, he's probably done. Even... Oh yeah, word. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, can't even keep track. Yo, but the the music on Nightmare Before Christmas is just, was just so. I don't know. I, I I think probably that because like that that was obviously like, you know, an an original score that wasn't like them taking, you know, that wasn't a a case where they're like taking 
other songs or whatever. But like, I don't know, just the original song, the songwriting on that shit was so sick to me. It just created such, it just like, I don't know, just amplified the movie like a million times. Um, and I don't know, probably that one because that was probably, that's like probably half the reason that movie is so like beloved because oh, of yeah. the fucking music. It's so like iconic. Um, yeah, no, like this, like the song where he first discovers Christmas Town. Oh my and, God, man. Uh, What's this? Like, Banger. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> That um that the first one when they introduce Jack and they like lay out the lay out mm-hmm. Halloween Town and um, oh my my, fa- my my favorite my favorite song in the whole joint is when um is uh is uh the one where he's singing on the hill it's the one oh that my god like, the sad it, it's one. That one yeah yeah there it is it's that one and, and and then they end the movie with it when him and Sally finally get to like just, oh, oh, just I, I don't know man like that's 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 one of my favorite movies ever I it's it's one of those I used to watch. Like I alternate whether I watch it on Halloween or Christmas. My um, it, it's funny because like my sister and I would used used to love to watch it together, and my dad would never want to watch it because he'd be like, "That's that's that's weird. Like, why would they do that to Christmas? All, 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 all this thing." He he's gotten over that. He was he realized he was being kind of weird about it, but like it, it, it was. I, I love I love everything about the Nightmare Before Christmas. I love the. But like, like I'm a big stop motion person too. So like, yeah. I love, I love the puppetry and all the little, the little details. And like, of course, like, like those movies take so long to make. Dude, oh you my know, God, man. like behind the scenes videos, and it's like them doing one scene, like one fucking motion. I, yeah, you already know, like stop motion is crazy as a yeah. Part. But then to just make it, like, I don't know, just to make it into that like breathtaking like achievement is crazy. That movie's yeah. so good, man. Jack, Jack, definitely re- relatable ass relatable ass dude <laughs> yeah yeah no like you're so good at one thing but it's like not not to say that it's not your passion but like you know like it is like he's like the pumpkin king and he's like born to be the pumpkin king but he wants to be santa claus you exactly. know like yeah, exactly. you know, he, 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 he like finds this new thing and he's like i want to do this and, and yeah like i think the music the, the music plays a huge role in kind of like you know like music is like music and film is like inherently manipulative like it is like, like it's there to dictate mood of the scene most of the time but like but like it's it's like i love the way the music kind of directs the whole vibe of that movie in particular that and um i just learned this recently because i rewatched it but um either y'all seen dead presidents um the uh who made who made dead presidents the hughes brothers um it's, it's it's a movie from the 90s about a guy who goes to the vietnam war and comes back and bad things happen i'm gonna put it that way um watch dead presidents it's fucking right. great it's right. it's a, it's it's a, it's a um yeah no nah. you, you know it's it's like a, it's like a, it's like a rap hood classic too definitely um fucking um lorenz tate's in it chris tucker's in it um pete david's in it good good cast but like danny elfman like you're gonna like watch dead presidents danny elfman did the score for dead presidents oh, sure. like completely <laughs> com- completely different vibe from fucking nightmare before christmas like you'll see what i'm talking about but like yeah. it like rewatching it i was like danny elfman did the music for this like it's it's crazy the amount of things the amount of things he's done music for but no, um, that's tight. yo uh, like piggybacking off that though like just as far as like i think the most recent example of like m- music that like bugged me out was like uh fucking good time by the uh safety safety brothers is that who did it is that oh you? yeah no i haven't seen this not yet oh, yo yo did you you saw uncut gems of course okay yeah. i'm like I'm, I'm i don't know how controversial an opinion is but like i thought uncut gems was like it was like cool but like good time fucking blew me away bro and one oh tricks point never did the um did the uh Word. soundtrack yeah crazy yo, okay. and it's oh man that movie is so that's one of those movies that like it just like go it just it just only moves like like up like this there's no like I don't know, bro. And Robert Pattinson, you know, is like the lead. And um, bro, that shit, I cannot recommend. That movie goes crazy. And the wait a minute, why? It's about the the dude. It's um, you know, Robert Pattinson and his brother, who's like um, has like. You know, oh, was that the movie where he's in like the jumpsuit and he looks like a monkey in it and shit? Or am I thinking of something else? <laughs> wait, I don't know. No, I don't know. It's where he 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 and his brother like rob a bank. Okay, yeah. And he like you know like kind of um his brother's like special needs and he's like right, right, right. like coercing him to like come rob this bank with him and then he like goes on the run and he goes into some weird has some weird shit happen to him and then um he's just like a depraved character but uh 
The movie is nuts, bro. Okay, and I recommend, highly recommend. Thank you for reminding me because I remember watching the trailer for it. And yeah, no, like, there is a scene in the trailer where he's in like a, he's in like a, it's like a maroon and orange jumpsuit, and he looks, he looks either like a little kid or like a little like spider monkey. Like he like he's like swimming in the suit. And I, oh, and oh, like, oh. I or, or, or maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Either way, like I do remember when um. I do remember hearing about it. I yeah. also thought Uncut Gems was just cool. Like Dude, it, it was it's, so over. I felt it was like oh, people overhyped it, man. Like, like it was just a good movie. Like let it be a good movie. Right. It's it's good. I I, I like. I, but once again, I want to watch it again, mm-hmm. just because like I feel like that's one I'd appreciate more on a second watch. But it was it was good. You know, I mean, like, I'm I saying it was dope. Like, I'm saying it was dope. Like I, you know, yeah. that was obviously like an unexpected role for him, and he killed mm-hmm. that. I mean, yeah, I thought the ending was like kind of predictable and then at the end i was like okay yeah that's, of course that's what happened but like yeah. but it, you know it was a good movie um a good time is the one for sure out of okay movies, like one. no i'm about to i'm about to i'm about to add that to my uh i'm about to yeah. add that to my watch list right now yeah, yes. um hell yeah so um oh wait well i don't well, i don't want to get too far off track but did either of y'all watch the curse this um 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 the uh why am I forgetting son's name? The Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone show on Showtime that one of the Safdie brothers is in. I I did not know that. I still need to watch Nathan for you. I've only seen clips. I need to catch up. I literally queued that on HBO today. Like I mm-hmm. queued Nathan for you today, but not Nathan, Nathan, Nathan for you is great. It's it's a uh, it's definitely an acquired taste. It's kind of it's like verging on like the type of prank stuff that I don't love when people do to other people in real life. It's like right on the border. Mm. but it's i love it i think it's great it's i i I think he's very funny and i think uh the curse is definitely more of a drama than it is a comedy but like that awkward kind of like awkward silence type shit they do is very prevalent in this it's 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 uh i still haven't finished it i know how it ends because people spoiled it like crazy because it's a pretty crazy ending but Mm-hmm. Either way, like if you're if you're into Safi Brothers, anything you'll probably like The Curse, it's and you'll fun. definitely like Nathan for you. And uh, oh. what's the show he just did on HBO? The one with um the not the experiment. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's gonna come back to me later. But it's so it's it's so good. It's the one where he like makes the fake set and like Wait. helps people orchestrate like real life events. Is The Curse not the follow? What? No, okay, I was I'm tripping because I thought the follow-up to like nathan for you i was thinking the curse was the follow-up for nathan for you that but that obviously does not make sense um no the, it, it <laughs> I, was the, no, about. I don't know the name of it i don't i don't know the name it's it's like the it's it's like the experiment or like uh like the setup no not the setup fuck what's it called it's it, it's it's gonna kill me the rehearsal it's okay the word, rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I saw yeah. that on on the uh, on Max today. <laughs> I got I got I got to tap in. I I've seen a. I I also want to watch um, review. Have you seen that show review where it's like um this guy who like it's like a com it's like in the like, it was a Comedy Central show and it was a dude who um like just reviews anything anyone wants him to. Oh and so yeah. People will be like oh review like cocaine review like. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like throughout the whole show, it's this general plot of the of the producers trying to like ruin his life. It's really, really funny. <sighs> he like loses his like he like gets divorced and like that's older too, right? It's old, yeah. It's probably from like the early I don't know, it's probably from twenty fifteen maybe era or something like that's that. That's tight. Okay. Yeah, like they don't they they don't make shit like that anymore, man. I I love I love yeah. that like I obviously like within reason and there's like boundaries and limits I have, but like stuff like that's just I'm 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 always attuned to that like type of like weird out there like borderline offensive like reality bending shit like I I just like I'm an adult swim baby like that's that that's yeah. that, that that's that's my whole shit so you yeah no you just put me on to a bunch that I gotta go check out later Word. um but okay so for the both of y'all um whoever wants to go first um when did the both of y'all realize that music was going to be more than just a hobby for you and this was like a thing you really wanted to actively pursue and not just like listen to on the side and like participate in type shit um it first started with me um i i I was just like a huge huge music fan and my homie tao um he just cook up beats with me on on screen share um on discord and shit and then little by little i just like you know he'd ask for help and i tell him 
you know, add a kick here, add a, add a snare there, like change the, this part. And it just felt like my brain was telling me like to do this stuff. And he, he told me to like download FL and fuck around. And like after the first month That's or so, uh, I wanted to like drop a beat tape because I made like 70 beats. So I dropped something on Bandcamp and, and people really liked it. Like my friends really liked it. So I decided to pursue it. Was it, um, sorry to cut you off. Was that Project Sphinx or was this before Sphinx? It was before. It was tabbed. It was like a month okay. before Sphinx. <laughs> yeah, because I was because I was because I was rinsing Sphinx back, Sphinx back recently on Volume One, not the remix. I've actually never heard the remix version, but I keep on. I'm mad I didn't get the chance to listen to it. <laughs> You're just good. like, but just like, um, yeah, like it, it's a, uh, you know, you you know, like listening to it, and then I found um um I found an interview you did maybe like a couple years ago. Where <laughs> Where you, <laughs> um, um, I might forget son's name, but shout out to whoever interviewed you because he did a good job. But like, I was listening to it, and you had mentioned, you had mentioned that, um, that like Dilla and Sage, Eddie Blue were your two, mm -hmm. were kind of like your two influences for putting Definitely. specifically together. And I was like, I can hear that. Like, it's like not that it was apparent in a way that like turned me off, but it was like, oh, this is clearly somebody who fucks with Dilla and Sage, you know? Like, yeah. and, and it was. And you know, like listening to that was like really. I mean, like it's, it's like a really pleasant, like very chill listen. Like it's yeah, of course. It's just like like it really, like it really is the type of thing I can just like throw on and like concentrate on while doing other stuff, and like not like. It was very easy to live in that, and then I heard Panther Volume Two, and I was like, oh, there he is. You know, like <laughs> it's like just, just kind of like hearing hearing that hearing your voice develop from there like, <laughs> yeah. the music, like panther volume two i was like oh okay like this is like really going somewhere now definitely thank you yeah but no doubt yeah Dello really inspired me with his like techniques and, and how he like structured the specific beats um and then yeah sage just the, the textures really just got to me i think that's that's where it all started like some rap songs like the whole grainy texture that's really what got me yeah i get that and like it's crazy because I'm, 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 I think it was a, uh, it wasn't Ramsey's. It actually might have been Papyrus. I heard Papyrus and I was like, this is somebody who really loved Azukar and wanted to like turn that into and, and wanted to like channel that into yeah. their own thing. And I was and like, because like Azukar is my favorite song on SRS. I've heard that song a million fucking times. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, it, it's it's a uh, like you know like that warmth that's in that song was it, it's like melancholy and warm and mm -hmm. like it's like soupy in that way like and i feel like and i feel like that song and a couple others in particular that was the first time on sphinx where i was like oh yeah like i i feel it you know like it like jumped out at me immediately um <laughs> fun fact that's like my like 15th beat ever it's mixtape material 15 which is what? yeah so mixtape material Every wow. beat, every beat he makes is called mixtape material. It's so funny. Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> I just, I just number it. <laughs> I just, I just number it. Ah, mm. uh -uh, man, like that. That's that's like so, like so, like were the other, so were the other fourteen beats, like were those all from the first project, or like what, 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 what were what, 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 what were the other fourteen like? The first like on, fourteen on, on Sphinx. Oh, oh no, oh, oh I, yeah, oh yeah, those, those. Oh man, it's just pretty bad loops you know trying to find what i really like um <laughs> like it just i would just like try to try to melt samples together it was really bad bro we um, need to hear mixtape material one for the people hell no <laughs> 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 <She was terrible. laughs> but um uh, i think again yeah, definitely after like 30 I, I was i was finding my sound and, and what i really liked right yeah you know like i i could i could I yeah, you know, like I could really sense that. And that was also when I started noticing people like started started started, started noticing more people being like, oh like clown cat. And you know, like of course, like the like there's we'll get to this in a little bit, but like this there's, there's so so many collabs, you know, like you've 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 worked with so many people already. Like I was like going through earlier and I saw you had a song the fucking concept, concept jacket. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, like it, you know, like it's, it's you know, like you're just like talking about like being in class and shit. And you're just like you, you've you you've already worked with like some crazy luminaries and just like ugh, like it, it was like it's really cool to see how like quickly the uh um things have kind of scaled scaled up for you you know yeah it's surreal 
if yeah. I can add, if I can add, like yo, like same with like the knack. Like also, I've heard like a lot of your unreleased shit, but like, bro, like they these 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 like mad established like rappers sound so at home on your beats, which is the yeah man. So even you know that's an important part because it's like I don't know, bro. Like they they fit on your shit, and like you're I think you're you're like match you're matching the quality. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I just wanted to shout you out for that. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Uh, static started is still crazy. Yeah, man. Static started like, with that. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the static started. My fa- my favorite on Don't Go Outside is Hades. Like when I heard mm-hmm. Hades, I was like, this is like like I make playlists every year of like my personal favorite songs. I was like, I I, I threw it on like twenty seconds in. I was like, this is <laughs> this is amazing. Like what I is do. this? You know. Yeah, that it's so good, man. Don't go outside. It's so good. Yeah, like it, you, you, unruly, what happened? Shout out to Unruly, man. Yeah, He's truly. So like, nice. His son is listening. Shout out to Unruly. Like, I don't know if we've ever talked. I think we have. I'm so sorry if I'm blanking on it, but like, you're dope, bro. Like, good shit. Um, and Marcus, what about you? Because I was, cause, cause I was, cause I was doing some other digging, and I saw that you were talking about, um. Um, you were you, you were talking about shit in college with like Griselda and Machiavelli and ethics. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. That was like a whack. But yo, look at man, <laughs> I was a big. I, I also wrote about like Ka, like you know when I was getting. Um, I think uh, it was like my second year of college. I wrote about Ka too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I I loved academic writing. Like um, that was something I was like probably too passionate about. Like I cared so much about that shit. Um uh in retrospect i probably cared too much about it but yeah i did that um because i used to be a fucking big griselda head and i was like you know i mean i might i you know back in back in those days man like when they were they were like still still you know still on the rise like they're fucking meteoric right now which yeah. like it's, be- it's like honestly so beautiful to see because like yeah. dude gun like west side gun is like just like top 10 like rap artists like for me like I don't mm-hmm. know, he has such a leg, he's you know so legendary and, and he's an icon, bro. Oh he's my god. No, yeah. literally. But um yeah, no, nah, that that paper is kind of whack in retrospect. But uh it was cool that I did it and it was cool that I uh fucking read lyrics from like Supreme Blyantel um <laughs> in front of like, you know, like a bunch of like random academic uh peers and shit. <laughs> but, I like I bring that up because that's tough. A B Blind Tell is my favorite gun album. Same. Is, You're real. Like, good. To, no, to, 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 to me, I don't know that he's topped it, honestly. Like he's he's come close a couple times, but mm-hmm. like Blind Tell, like Blind Tell to me is like that's like that yeah. and Fly God are his classics to me. Yeah. No, yeah. Blind, you know? Oh man, Blind Tell is so good. I love I, I have a special place in my heart for like um Hitler Seven. I yeah, Hitler Seven, I was about to say was the closest Hitler, thing. Hitler Yeah. Not one yeah. Seven. Seven's great. Seven is I, I I um I love I listened to that in college and I also like um what would Sheen Gun do is definitely not like you know the, the best like thing Griselda's done, but that album too has so mm-hmm. many, so many amazing moments. Like Chef Chef Dredge was so Oh my god, that moments. shit so, knocks. I would not it's stop listening to that shit came out, but um yeah, Gun, yeah, Gun definitely has he can he can stop like today and he'll still be like talking yeah. about like you know what i mean he's, he's yeah so uncomfortable. Man. yeah and then conway and benny like so fucking nice but conway um yeah conway's i always go back and forth with my favorite between griselda but i think it's still gone honestly i think i just like guns guns just so out there like yeah for me, which i you know i dig but um see yeah. you're real for that too because most people because like guns my favorite he's always been my favorite it's the voice and just like his yeah. his, 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 his the his, style like, crazy. Yeah, right. his, he, yeah. Like his imagination is just like out of this world. He's like, I, I don't know. It's, it's just like his raps are so colorful to me. Like yeah. at their peak, they were just like, I don't know. He was just like, I, like I just love the way he writes, and just like, like just like the one line that always sticks out to me is one from a uh, one from a uh, blind tell. I think it's on the first song where he talks about like whipping out a stick black as Africa. Like yeah. that shit, that that shit kills that's me that's every right. time, bro. <laughs> Like I, I just like he's 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 the funniest to me and like mm-hmm. and, and you're like I just like 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 quick plug I guess this is my own shit who gives a fuck um I just had um um I just profiled Benny for Brick Magazine um I'm very happy congrats thank that's early thank yeah. you man that that was yeah that was insane shout out to Atusa again 
for I'm, I'm gonna thank her a million times for giving me the alley oop there. But like, but yeah, like just like seeing seeing them get to where they are. Like even if not all the music is my favorite, like just their icons. Like they really did work very hard to um, put a per, put a certain sound on the map. Oh, for that's sure. like you know you can't really take that away from them. Um, they're definitely uh yeah I love them. <laughs> yeah yeah they're they're definitely yeah gun gun definitely he influenced today he like influences the way i think about albums too um, really i mean yeah like just like the way i mean you know the way he would have like these outros like on his out like having like the aa rashid outros, yeah, yeah the rashid yeah, outros, yeah. having like a little you know like he put it in my mind to have like yeah, i think it's cool to have like a, the craziest beat be like a minute long like i'm thinking of like gondek from like uh seven and oh like, god that song is so man. crazy I'm like, hey, yeah, it was so short, but I'm like, yeah, I fuck with it. Like, cause it's short. It's like, yeah. you want to keep coming back, but it's like rocks rattling against a subwoofer. I love that. Oh, beat, man. God, it's so good. Not in... if, oh my God. I love, I love him so much, bro. He's so good. Him and Iceberg Theory are like my recent, like, uh, I, I, I love Iceberg Theory, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, nah, they're, they're a crazy duo, but uh, yeah, yeah. Gun, Gun is definitely, definitely influential. Yeah, for real. But um, I'm sorry to get off track. When did when did you uh when did you know music was gonna become more than just a hobby for you? Um, I think. Well, I record. I made my first of all. I would write to. I like never did like. I started writing like raps was like the first creative writing I really did for real, and um, I started doing that in like 2020, I think. Um. And I would write to like Messiah Music beats on like Bandcamp and, um, you know, just kind of have imposter syndrome on air. And I would think I was like, <laughs> so nice. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I recorded my first songs like 2020 or 2021. And, um, you know, I thought it was cool. I felt mad self-conscious, like recording in front of my friend. But then I was like, I don't care, man. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm like doing it. I don't care. And then... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I think I I don't know what my next uh, like official song was. Oh, I did this song called Choking, uh-huh. produced by uh, this dude who used to go by uh, Ojimat, and he I think he's like a Japanese producer. Um, he works now with uh, this dude Kins. Do you know Kinsey? Uh, Babyface Perler. Yeah, I've heard the name before. He's made a bunch of albums with Fanon, like a bunch. Okay, and he's from like Louisiana. But anyway, he's um. You know, Ojamad is a producer who now works with this dude, Kinsey. Anyway, I did that song. It was cool. And then, you know, I, like, linked with uh, Big Flowers. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Shout out to Michael. Michael. Michael, for sure. And, um, yeah, they definitely helped me, um, like, find my confidence to, like, keep going. Because I, I was telling them, I'm like, I don't know about this shit. Like, I don't know. I'm doing it, like, so casually. But they definitely, like, egged me on to keep going um, and encouraged me. So definitely shout out to Michael. Um, yeah. yeah michael mike mike michael michael connects so many dots and is so passionate yeah. about all of this stuff like they just reached out to me on some like hey i would love to do graphics for anything you got going on and i was like i'm starting a podcast and he's like, they like, like they're the reason I, I, I don't know like yeah just shout out to flowers always mm-hmm. that's that's, oh, that's, sure. that's um that's bro forever Indeed. um and so like the so and, and, like the thing that's really interesting about the two of y'all like separately is that, you know, like, you both kind of started hosting around the same time. But, like, the thing that I noticed, like, as as I was going through both of y'all sit, I noticed that, like, in terms of, like, writing and production, like, the more experience the two of you developed, the more bold the two of you started to get in terms of just, like, messing with time signatures and messing with, like, drums and shit. Because, like, you look at something... Like you look at something like uh sorry, excuse me, you look at something like choking or you look at like um Sphinx and like those are kind of very for lack of a better word, I always think of those as like traditional traditional things in terms of like this is me making this thing I enjoy. And as the songs as more songs and more projects start to come out, like I'll notice like Marcus, like you kind of start playing with like how far so, like how far you can stretch a measure and like, um, how far you can like stretch a rhyme across like two three four measures and like ara like you start stripping drums out and pulling samples from all sorts of weird crazy places and like 
the both of y'all started experimenting really fast, which I really appreciated because it shows, you know, like it shows not even just the confidence, but just like a curiosity and like a passion that like some people don't, de- you know, like some people don't start developing a voice until like way, way into their careers. You're know, like making music for 10 years and it's like, oh yeah, I figured it out. But like y'all just kind of, y'all, you, you both hit the ground running which I really appreciate about the two of you. Um, like, like, did y'all, like, as, like, as the both of you started creating more stuff, like, even before we get to how you, how you met, um, had y'all felt yourselves becoming braver and more open to experimentation as you made these kind of moving forward a tiny bit? Definitely. Um, I, I think I, I just started, you know, paying like listening to more music definitely helped me um and just finding my sound uh and also definitely having like some not of the glazing shit having having him in mind rapping over the beats really helped me like try to visualize what what the perfect way to to stretch forward was and how to combine his best abilities into the beats i think that that definitely helped um yeah i think for me um uh, just as far as like flow, like just as far as flow is concerned, um, I think like listening to Starker influenced me so. <laughs> bro, I fucking love Starker. Oh, shout out to Starks, man. Bro, he's I love. I met, him, I met him in YL. Shout out to YL, bro. Yeah, shout out to Dylan. He's great. <laughs> Yo, those guys are so like truly such down to earth good dudes. I met them at Supply and Demand in 2021. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Starker's flow for sure. Like he just inspired me to. I don't know. Like, fucking pick up the fucking <laughs> Bro, I think it's so sick when, when people yeah. do that. You know, we see a lot of people, a lot of people, fuck on the fucking Eminem side of things, and it's like, okay, yeah. like, you know, do you really need to be like rapping like at all? But then, you know, I think on the other side of the bridge, like maybe like where we're at, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, he influenced me a lot. Uh, lungs, like, mm. I, I don't know. I know you referenced lungs in the thing, but I'm like, I don't even know if like, I see, the, I see, I see the like. Um, you know, I see the like comparison for sure. I think Starker is definitely more, um, definitely more like of an influence for me. But just as far as um, I don't know, I, I I think what you said was so on point though about um, you know, you said like, uh, you said something about uh, in the in your review about um, you know, like it was like lungs, it was like the speed of lungs, but like triple the urgency. I thought that yeah. was tight, and much of that review, bro, I like all of it is like mad appreciated mm-hmm. talking about the fact that you did that shit but no nah, man thank you no nah, exper- experimenting with, with the flow is definitely something i try to do and, and ours beats are um just they, they they were just so inviting um not to get too ahead and talk about the album but um, oh, of course i get it but yeah production definitely um production definitely like pushes me like so much like depending on the producer um so and yeah i definitely felt more confident like you know as you make more songs I never thought I would even make like 10 songs in my whole like time of making music. Like making one was an achievement, used to be an achievement for me. Um, so it, it, it's cool. I think the more you, you know, more confident you get, the more, and curious, like you said, I'm definitely getting more uh, curious with trying to, trying to shake it up and challenge myself, I guess. So. I think yeah. I, I, I love that because like, even like, once again, going through your band camp earlier, like I was really like, I mean, like I'd heard the song before, but like hearing it again, like the man of the fly, and just like you mm-hmm. talking about like how it was inspired by Woods today, I wrote nothing. Yes, yes. And just like, it's kind of like taking that prompt and like once again, like turning it into your own thing. Like just like just just, just as like a um today I wrote nothing was my first Woods album. Mm-hmm. Um I told him this before. I didn't love it when I first heard it. It took me it, it, it took me a couple of listens and then it just it, it just clicked. And I was like, this guy's a genius. You know, like it must have been in like 2015. It must have been like right around the time the album came out. But like I heard it and it just clicked for me and like I don't know man like it's like that 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 man's writing will activate something in you and if it doesn't then I don't I don't know what to tell you but he's 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 special for that so I saw you do that and I was like oh that makes perfect sense you word. know like it's 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 in there like that like that song in particular really caught me oh yeah. word no thank you man shout out to Sasko who did that beat that beat is shout so out to Sasko cool. crazy. Mm-hmm. Asko's the man. You you know. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Woods is a big influence for sure. Um, and I think that's also like, you know, I can I can attribute um I feel um, you know, like I feel able to like experiment because I feel like I've so, you know, 
I like listen to all these amazing artists and I feel like they just set so many like step like you know so many like groundbreaking but like stepping stones like woods like are we ever I don't know if we're, we're never gonna see a fucking artist like woods again man like uh, he's he's uh, he's one of one man yeah mm-hmm. like you know rock like ha huh, you know yeah there's so, many, there's just so many even maybe blue like uh, yeah, so many influ- so many great influences. So that's definitely I can contribute a lot of it to having good influences for sure. So, yeah, man, you know, like, you, you know, like having having good influences, but you know, kind of not letting. Like there was, I was I was reading some review that somebody wrote over it. It, it was like an early one. It was it has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but there was like a phrase. It was a Sheldon Pierce review that he wrote for Chance the Rapper's The Big Day. I remember now. There was like a section where he talked about how like around the coloring book era chances like his faith like he's he said he said he was guided by his faith but not blinded by his light and i think about that phrase a lot because like that's what i would attribute both of y'all's influences like you know like you're you know you're like you're like guided by them but you're not like so enamored that you forget that you're a person and you need to make your own thing you know like you 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 like you like the the foundations there but you built it differently and you built it to make it sound and look like y'all. And that's something, and like, once again, like having that come up so early is just like really cool to me. But now that we're here, um, you know, like when did y'all, I mean, like, <laughs> sorry. I mean, like, I know that, um, where did it go? I'm so mad at myself. I know, um, 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 I know leaking oil is one of the first songs that y'all worked on together. Mm-hmm. but like when did uh when did y'all first connect like when did y'all first hear of each other when like like when did that happen hey when did when did you first meet when did you decide you first wanted to work together and when did you decide i want to make a whole album with this dude um i have first uh i don't know if you're familiar with like throne and the hidden renaissance mm-hmm. uh, yeah. but me and someone were were both in in their discord and I remember, I, I don't usually do this. I was just checking, like, because people just drop drop random songs in, uh, in like the, the different channels. And so I, I clicked on one uh, by Speakerhead, and it was featuring Sunmundi, or it was Sunmundi's song produced by Speakerhead. I, I forgot which, but um, it was Vidette, and that that joint blew me away. Oh my god! Like the the, the one liners and everything. So I just hopped immediately in his DMs. I was I was low key fanboying. I'm like, yo, I need to get you on one of my beats. Um, and then um, from there, I sent him like four or five beats, and he he loved Stalemate, and that was on Vox oh, and Rama. Stalemate is crazy, and and that was the the first time he he rapped that shit. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. And so I proposed an idea of doing an EP. I think, I think we were so. thinking, yeah, it was like an EP or something. Um, and I dropped like four beats with him, and uh, like three of those beats ended up being the first three tracks on Lived and Born. And then from there, we just started like building it out. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I put that song like in the Discord uh, just on some bullshit, like oh, you know, that's cool, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, I knew, I knew, I hadn't tapped into your music at that point, but I knew that you were, you know, you had like a, you were like a growing, like you, you were like popping, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like I heard some of your shit. I heard um, it might have been uh, fucking the beat that is gonna be on that on next year's album. I heard that on your Twitter. I saw that and I knew that was sick. And I was like, okay, this dude is like nice. And then, yeah, we, you know, we, we just, you know, we built and uh, yeah, the first three tracks we, that you sent me um, became the first three on uh, the album. So yeah, yeah you, I, I was, I remember, I still remember bugging out, bro. <laughs> the first like bath beats you sent were like, no, obviously they're all crazy, but like when you just get a, a start like that, I was like, <laughs> no it, it it paved the way for sure for the right mm-hmm. man and, and, and yeah like since y'all both brought it up um i feel like i don't talk about this very often but just like the idea of like hearing something crazy in a discord for the first time just like just just like just like the like the whole concept and idea of like discord communities period are a thing that i've really come to appreciate it i, I mean like i've been using discord since it was like only a gaming service mm-hmm. and like seeing it See, seeing it like expand out into music in like the late 2010s, early 2020s, especially around COVID was like really, really dope. I actually think I wrote a piece about how 
Discord, Bandcamp, and Twitch were kind of like the new like online forum community. Like, like obviously there's more than that, but mm-hmm. like them them three were going crazy around that time and like seeing seeing them make the transition and just like watching people. You, 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 like I was a part of Overcast Discord for a while. Like when he still had his shit going, and like I was in knowledges for a while. I've I've been like I've been around. I poke in and and, and you like and, and you like tap in with things. Like I I I don't I don't, I don't, I don't get as involved in the communities as I want to because I don't always have the time. But like, but just like the phenomenon of just like finding some popping shit in there and just being like, oh, we need the link, we need the build. You know, like it, it's like it really does remind me of like of like I don't have a peak Twitter time, but like it's just. Like it gave me the same feeling I got finding like minds on Twitter, mm-hmm. you know. Like there's like there's nothing, like that type of shit gives me so much hope for all this social media stuff. Like it's just like you, you like 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 the good people are all like the cream's always gonna rise to the top in situations like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, for sure. Shout out to yeah. I mean, I I, I met um, I met so many great artists on this on Discord. Um, shout out to Outside House um speakerhead for sure i think i met sasco like on discord um yeah no it, it's definitely it's definitely got a lot of uh a lot of, a lot of good in it for sure yeah definitely and um and, and you know, like i know we talked about don't go outside quite a few times and i think it's um like re-listening to it i really do like i really do feel like don't go outside is like, like, I don't want to call that lived and born 1.0, but like listening to them side by side, I see a lot of like, I see a lot of what was eventually built into lived and born on that one in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting to hear that this started out as like three separate tracks that were going to be an EP and then it turned into like, it turns into like the 12, 13 track joint we have now. Because um, like one of my questions was going to be whether this was made whether this, whether all of these beats were made to order, or if you like had them around and then they found their way to some Monday, but it, it, but like it sounds like they, it sounds, it, it sounds like it was the second way. Yeah, it was being built for like a year and a half, probably. Yeah, in, in total, something like that. We, I, I, I went back into our DMs, or uh, just to see like the date. I'm so bad, my memory sucks, and I like just do not know <laughs> dates and shit. Like it's terrible. But we worked. We start. I think the first song we did november 2022 and we finished it august 2023 so yeah 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 call this august yeah well the first one we did was um yeah i think stay compassionate was the first one we did and then okay uh, yeah i think we ended uh yeah i don't know it's been a long time you know i i I, I take a long time like making albums um uh that's how that's how I do it. And I know Ara, that's not usually the case for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> it's exact opposite, but I think it was such a good change of pace. I, I enjoyed it. Bro, it's crazy how I have to apologize to producers in advance. <laughs> when they agree to do an album with me, I'm like, this is going to take a long time. And like, you're probably going to get sick of me and like, whatever. But no, you're, you're, you, he was he was patient for sure. And uh, it paid off. It's cool. Definitely. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. See, now he, he, hearing it, this is like a fire and ice thing is like really yeah. cool to me because because yeah like because you're like we, we, we you, you know like i know ara is like hella fucking prolific like yeah. you put out you put out what like three projects this year already like including um, this one right yeah it's about to be three yeah like yeah right okay so it's it's a uh, yeah you know like i i um like 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 i appreciate both like i appreciate both methods like you know, like i appreciate people who drop you know like yeah, yeah, yeah like when i was writing about the gangrene album I was going through like Alchemist and Oh No's backlogs. They put out a dozen projects combined last year. Like they each put out like six. Al mm-hmm. might have put out seven. You know, like so like, but like seeing, but I think it's a uh, so like clearly the two of you kind of had to meet in the middle in terms of yeah. like in terms in terms of like the speed and just like like the fact that the fact that y'all were able to reconcile slow versus fast and come together and make something this dope is great like you know like it, it's like sometimes sometimes you gotta compromise when you want to like really bring something spe- it, it worked yeah. out man like this, this is this is like I, I mean like obviously no disrespect to all the other great stuff you guys have made but like i heard this like for the first time and like i said like yeah like aura can say like i hit R like as soon as i listen i was like this is really special like this is this is some really crazy shit 
you know so um thank you so much man yeah you know it it, 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 it made me it made feel like it made me happy to be in a like it was one of those things where i was like i'm happy that i'm in a position to ship this out to as many people as possible I, I, I was like people need to hear this like you know um, but um, I appreciate it. No, of course pleasure. the thing the thing that really got me and was making me laugh was um like listening to the project and hearing all the reincarnation talk but the two of you being very explicit about like this isn't necessarily like an album about reincarnation and like yeah. the whole time and the whole time i'm just like 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 not that i had to think about it too hard but it was just like really interesting to hear like between the clips and just like the style of production and the style of the raps like to see how like the themes were there but it's not an album about like i mean i guess i guess at the end of the day i would love i would love a little bit more clarity on what you mean by this not being explicitly about reincarnation <laughs> yeah well all, like in, well in green. <laughs> yeah no i hear you well i mean i i i i uh i didn't want to be too on the nose you know of course uh, yeah you know that's kind of a fear of like uh writing something and then you're like this is too like fucking on the nose um but yeah no i I mean i think when we started out making the album um i didn't you know it's not like i was like oh let's make an album you know that's like centered around like the idea of reincarnation or whatever it just kind of like um it was kind of you know probably almost halfway into the album um i was just kind of noticing the themes of the writing um and it felt like i was writing things that were innate to me that i like new but it's like i don't i can't really trace back my source for why i know this mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so and it just feels like um i don't know it just felt like a continual like i'm just kind of like continuing some like other like knowledge that's like being like passed down sort of so you know i you know like i don't want to be too um fucking like i don't want to like tell people like oh this is this and i believe in this and <laughs> You know, I'm a I'm a person like I I contradict myself all the time. Like we all do that. Like that's just being human. But um, yeah, you know, I tried to make it. I tried to make it. Uh, I want you to like feel it. I want you to feel feel the like feel the ideas instead of like being told the ideas. Almost. Cool. So um, yeah, that, that's kind of that's kind of where where I'm at with that. I think. I respect that a ton. You know, it's it's like like I forget who said this. It might have been in a, I forget what it was even in relation to, but just the idea of like, it just kind of comes down to like a reading comprehension thing where somebody was like, I think, it, oh, I forget the writer they quoted, but the person was like, you know, like, I'm not here to handhold people. Like, I'm not here to, ex I'm not here to explain what my writing is about to you. Like, I don't, you, you, know, you, you know, it's like, I write, like, not even like like this also might kind of might be getting away from what you're talking about a bit but just the idea of like i write for me and if you get it cool and if you don't then like either catch up or you don't need to be here you know exactly. just no that's and, a, for sure a film point <laughs> all right, i'll double down on that man that ghost, that ghost face quote about art you know um you know about how that quote you know about how he's like you don't understand like you don't have to understand what the fuck I'm saying. I understand it, and it's pretty. Yeah. I know that's so mm -hmm. true. Like I, I stand. But at the same time, at the same time, that quote can be can be probably misinterpreted or like miss. Yeah. Can like. Uh, in any case, I um yeah you know I write for me. It's very personal. It's very like, you know I understand when people don't fuck with it. I'm like yeah, of course you don't. Like sure, that's fine. <laughs> like whatever you know. <laughs> I fuck with it and my man R fucks with it. So you know, take take the you know, if you dig it, you dig it. And that's why I like appreciate people who, you know, people who dig my stuff. I'm like, I like I, I just I appreciate that shit extra because I'm like, you don't have to like I don't know why I almost like don't know why you dig it, but I appreciate it. Because um yeah, you know, I do it I, I do it for me. I think I think most writers like to think that they, you know, do that shit for themselves. Like writing so personal, you know how it is, like um so yeah, I, I stand by that. Uh, put that ghost face quote on my grave. Yeah, no, I feel it. I, you, you know, that's a great quote too. Like you don't even have to understand what I'm saying. Like it just sounds cool. Yeah, if like, you feel, I mean, and especially if you feel it, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like understand it. I think Elucid, I don't know what pod, what interview Elucid was talking about that on, but Elucid had some interview where he was talking about like, I think it was after I told Bessie and people were like, like accusing him of like, mumbo jumbo writing i'm like 
and I'm like, fuck you. Like, a lucid's writing a lucid. Like, yeah. <laughs> how, can you, how can you not, like, fuck with what he's doing? Especially just the feeling. Like, you know, like, when you hear his music, it's like, you don't feel, like, you got to feel it. You know? Yeah. I don't understand everything he says. I don't understand every single thing, like, you know, Woods says, for example. You know, who does? Right. But it's like, you feel it, and you catch your little bits, and then you go back to the music, and you might find something else. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, it, it's, 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 like, primordial. You know, like when it comes to like the feeling, it's just like something. It's like in, inside of us all. Like, you, you, like it really is like human condition type shit. And like I think, like with you and Elucid in particular, like it's just like y'all have these like little turns of phrase that you'll just like throw in there, and it's just like, like, like I think that's a big part of where the Ka thing comes from. Because yeah. Ka's, um, Ka's amazing at I that. Can't help like, that. <laughs> like, like we all, it, 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 like we all know, like he'll just throw in like a nugget, and it's like. How has no one ever said this before? Like it, it, it exactly. feels like, like like it's so breathtaking, but it's like so obvious and so like somebody should have said this eight years ago, but he just figured it out. You know, like you got there are there are so many of those on this album, bro. Like like I like I like I lost track. Like I was writing them down, and like I was in I was like three four songs, and I'm like I there's too many. I would just it, it would be twenty minutes, and he just geeking out over all these lines but mm -hmm. um you know just like 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 the three the three songs that really caught me in that regard were uh capitulation um i believe what's the one where you're talking about um being on the ship and kicking your kicks off the side um oh, answering the call it is answering the call i, I yeah. couldn't remember if it was answering the call or everything is everything mm -hmm. but like so so i would say capitulation answering the call and like I told you, Harbingers, or right. like, mm -hmm. like, I can't tell you how many times I listen to Harbingers back. Man, and it's, it, like, 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 like that one, just like the, like the look into my eyes, these are the Harbingers. Yeah. Like there's this, there's this crazy David Cronenberg movie called uh, Scanners. I don't know if y'all ever seen Scanners. I need to watch that. I've heard it. I've heard it referenced in songs and shit. And I saw the thumbnail. It looks crazy. Watch Scanners. I to, I like, I don't want to spoil it, but at the end, there's a scene with, um, there's a scene with exploding eyeballs. You'll know it when you see it. Uh, but um, like I think about like I think about that scene when I think about all of Harbingers. Like that's like such a that's such a like, you know, like melt my eyes, see your future, no Denzel Curry type shit with that. Like like it really brought me there. And another big part of the reason is because like that like the beat for the song is so like I think I wrote this in the review. It sounds like a like 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 it sounds like a it sounds like a black and white sunrise like yawning landscape like 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 nothing but like inch tall I mean like inch high grass blades and like the sun on the horizon but like everything's black and white like right before like some zombies run across it, it, it's like it's like some real cinematic shit bro like I I like like I love how I love how much room and how much space there are in these beats. And like just how you like run through them, son. Like yeah, it, it, it's it, it, it like it really does feel like, you know, like there's just so much space and so like, like I feel like I could walk through these like hallways mm. and like there's uh I think I I think I mentioned this to Aura too, just like the whole like it feels like every one of these is like a really delicately constructed like hallway with like furniture and like knickknacks and shit that you gotta like bob and weave through like some mansion shit and like that song in particular really just feels so like it's so cliche it feels like a it feels like it's on the world you know like it, <laughs> it, 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 it really feels like some like city in a bottle shit you know Yo, and, sure, oh my god that beat is like, crazy that beat is nuts man but i wasn't gonna be on the album because yeah. I, was like, I was like is it too like jazzy but then i'm like fuck it it's so good like it needs to be Yo, the beat that we had before it, we had that song written and recorded yeah. it over a different beat. And I was like, okay, you know, when you first sent me the beat, I was digging it and I wrote the song and I recorded it. And I'm like, this doesn't, I don't know. I just felt like it didn't, it didn't feel like conclusive enough. It didn't feel like, I feel like the album needed to like have a more grand and like bold like ending. And then I was like, let's use this beat to beat the, you know, the Harbinger's beat. And uh, <laughs> perfect. A beat is so crazy. That beat also, mm. All in the wind and further. Those beats. That was you. Because I, I, I sent both of those beats in back to back one night 
Um, just I was never intending on them to be beat switch, and he just sends me a, a clip of both of them fading together. I'm like, yo, this is perfect. Was that like, was yeah. dirty, bro. Like, uh, like re re listening to it today. That's my new favorite song. It was Harbingers, and now it's that one. Or, it's like, that much <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's like that's that's one of my favorite parts about doing this because like this is music I was already listening to anyway. But like going back and revisiting it with like different eyes and like putting it like 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 the same thing happened with um uh not really in the expert like like um oh uh, what song was it um read the room was my favorite song before I talked to them and then re-listening to it so it goes is my favorite song you know right. like that's like that shows me that like the project has legs and is still introducing me to new things and like like I don't know. Like R in particular, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the, the the movie director um, Ingmar Bergman. You ever hear of the Seventh Seal before? Unfortunately not. So Wait, every my bad, my bad. I'll tell you. No, you No, don't talk. You good? All I was all I was gonna say was every single one of these beats sounds like it could be in the Seventh Seal. Mm, I, I think you every, every single one of them, bro. You 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 like, wrote something like that in the in the Pitchfork review, right? I think I did. Yeah. 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 I remember. Like, that. Like, 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 you need to go watch the Seven Seal. Like, I think you would, I think you would appreciate it a ton. Like, like the whole, like, like the movie is about this. Um, it's about this man. Like, death comes to him. He's in, like, he's in, he's like a robed figure, like shrouded in shrouded in black, and he's just got like this white face in the center, and like they're just kind of like chilling on an island together. Like there's like a, on the, the I think the most famous scene is of the two of them playing chess together on the beach, oh, and shit. the whole movie is just this guy like talking with death the whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's really incredible. I saw it. I saw it in um I saw it in college, and um, like I said, like listening to this album, like I'm like this is like the seventh seal. Like it just sounds like the seventh seal, you know, yeah. like in a way that in a way that's not like cheap or like you know like cloying or cliche like like it's not like you like included clips of it not not that that would have been a problem but like you, 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 you like you created that vibe without having the clips in there like it sounds like it just belongs you know like i like like to the point where if you ever put out a visualizer it needs to be set to the seventh seal you know like in my opinion <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> You know, no, I need to write a list of all the movies that people have brought up in relation to this album. I, mm -hmm. I think I did you, did you reference like Drive? I don't know if you referenced that in your in your thing, but like I, maybe it was a review uh, or uh, somewhere else. But someone, someone, mm -hmm. someone I think wrote like The Midnight Samurai. Maybe that was a movie someone like referenced or Drive. And like I don't know, I need to make a list because you're you're giving you're giving us a lot of like. I, know, I just heard my first movie. watch list right now. Yo, you're giving me new <laughs> context to my own album. Like, I need, I need yeah, to exactly. watch these movies, man. Like, <laughs> oh man, I love to hear that. Yeah, no, it's it's just like, like that's how I know something's really like affecting me. Like, like, like this movie and music shit. Like, I live this. Shit. Like, it's really like I'll hear, I'll, like I'll hear something and it'll like take me to either someplace new entirely or be like, oh, this reminds me of this, 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 and this, and like it helps make the image in my head whenever I hear the songs even more potent and tangible and the same thing happens with like you know like movies all like it, I, I relate them to me it, it's like that's just the way my brain works and like when i can really feel the gears turning i'm like this is something i'm gonna live with that's you know and, yeah and also, you know that that's so many and man much appreciation because i'm like you know i i, I like these more like evocative reviews of music like how did like i like hearing how it made you feel like yeah you know i think that's the most valuable kind of like you know reception or like reaction you can hope for is someone having this like unique feeling listening to something you made like so that does mean so much uh, mm -hmm. thank you man for sure no oh, thank you like that's important like, like i appreciate that y'all caught that because like that's that's the way i like to write about anything that yeah. like yeah it, yeah like it, it's it really like that's that's what makes it the most unique like that's that's kind of what it helps any writing stand out it's like how does it make you feel you yeah. know like you could you know you could be the person who's just like this happened in this song and then mm -hmm. this happened in that song i love this line i love that line like all oh, that's cool but yeah. you know like it means less when it's to me it means less when it's just that yeah. like you know like you want to like you know like i want to bring content because i mean like y'all bring 
y'all bring your context, your influences, your story. You know, like I want to bring my context and my perspective and maybe not so much my story, but definitely my like experience to like that. That's like, I look at reviews like conversations, you mm-hmm. know, like you, you know, like I want to be in conversation with the thing and at least try to, even if I don't like something, like there's been plenty of albums that I've written about that I didn't really like very much, mm-hmm. but I at least try to understand, like, like I always ask three questions. What are you trying to do? Does it work? Do I like that? Mm-hmm. Those are the, those are the big three. And, you know, even if I don't like something, I at least want to be able to say like, this is what they were trying to say. Maybe this isn't for me, or maybe I just thought it's plain bad, you know, but like, I think uh, no matter whether I like the music or not, it at least deserves to be heard out. It deserves to, you know, like it's, it's it, it, like it deserves to be examined and anybody can do that, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just a dude, but like, you know, yeah. like, but yeah. With but, all the references you put in your writing, it just makes you like, I don't makes the review sound so human compared to a lot of other robot reviews like I'm, just the way you describe shit just very human yeah thank yeah, you it was mad eloquent too like yeah that you know really yeah, reading your review is definitely like like you can see it like i don't know man we made this album that made you see something and then you read, read the review that makes me see it like yeah it's, exactly you know I mean? like, exactly it's just powerful it's cool you know shout out to the dude who uh, said wait dr yenlo you know we appreciate <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get in touch with that dude, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, like, bro, if you're listening, if you're listening, like, please make, yeah, Let's like, talk, that, man. That, yo, man, that email me, man. <laughs> please, yeah, no, that that you know that had me crying. I saw that, like, I saw, you know, I saw you post about it, and I was, just, wow. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was just like, sun's not even white. But that's funny as hell. Like, okay, I don't know, man. He, that, I don't know. But people, that's the internet, though. You know, you got both sides. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it it is what it is. It just it just made me laugh, and you know, like, but 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 it also made me really like feel like, yeah, like there is a lot, of, there is a lot of like Kyle and Yellow in here. But once again, not in a way that feels like derivative or you know, like it feels like it feels like the both of you, you know. Like I I I don't even know that like Yen Lo would be the first place I would if if I were yeah, to yeah, pick Yen Lo is crazy. Honor killed the samurai. Why are you not comparing it to Honor? Yeah, to I mean, right like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would say either Honor killed the samurai or uh, maybe I, mean, I, I would actually even go the Knights Gambit personally. Or like, this, it, it, like uh, I'm like with the beats in particular, it's very, very, very Knights Gambit to me. Um, yeah. Which is like that one grew on me. It, it took me a while to really like. And mm-hmm. I mean, like, shout out to shout out to fucking Ka. He's somebody I've met quite a few times um great 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 humble like i don't know man he's he's one of our yeah, best like the fact that like we, we don't he's another one we're never gonna get another car you know <laughs> nah, man. I'm, yeah i'm i'm like yeah, yeah no like i actually got the chance to uh see him for the first time in a long time like the last time i'd seen him was probably around the time orpheus came out uh-huh. and uh like um he um, um he did that pop-up in new york around um right after uh the last on um, the last two came out Oh, I was um, there. Oh, were you? Crazy. Yeah, I met him too. That was a great I <laughs> and I, I probably should have said what up to you, but I was like, I don't wanna like be no. weird or whatever. But yo, dude, he's the best man. He's so nice. Like he's mm-hmm. just such a good dude and yeah. It's it's nice, man. Yeah, such, it was such, yeah, no, like such 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 a good guy. And like everybody on that like that day I was uh, I, I was actually heading out here. So I had to leave early, and I uh, I used a uh, um, I used a little cheat code to get in real quick, say hi, and leave. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to Salim. But um, yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah he, he he just looked at me and he was like, "You can get in if you want." And I was like, "I'm gonna go wait in line." And then I was like, "Actually, I gotta catch this train in thirty minutes. Could you help me, please?" <laughs> I, I I don't I I I I probably shouldn't put Salim on the spot like that. But either way, like. <laughs> good things um yeah Ka's great and i hear like like to me i, I would say either honor kill the samurai or the knight's gambit before i would say yen yen low's great don't get me wrong but uh, i've listened to a lot of Ka, man i can't help i can't help the little but i think, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I think i'm uh i think people will find that i'm drifting in a different direction with my next shit so yeah I, i'm i'm yeah yeah like i i don't normally ask this question but you know, before we formally wrap this up, like y'all, like what what are next directions for the both of y'all? 
because I because because be, be, because yeah, like based on what I've heard from the both of you, like it's 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 look it, it's 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 looking like you're looking to expand a little bit. So I want to know more about that. All right, go ahead. Um, honestly, for the near future, um, I just have like four collabs lined up. Um, the the two that's closest, I guess I'll name drop. I've I've a morning run and a wise boy Jeremy. It's like a longer EP for both. Shout out to Jeremy. So, so, so dope. Amazing dude, too. Um, and then I have a solo project dropping on my birthday. That's like the the, the kind of second part to prelude. <laughs> that one's pretty crazy. The, the, the track list on that one is nuts. Yeah, that's the one. Damn. Oh, I love that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm ex- I'm, ex- I'm yeah, I'm excited. I want to, I, I want to see if you can be Alchemist and Oh No's record. I want six projects this year, bro. I'll, 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 I'll ship it to you early. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Marcus, what about you? Before we wrap this up, um, I'm working on the album for next like summer. It's looking like, um, with Sasco. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all. It's 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 cool. It's cool for sure. So yeah. that's gonna be a big old project, and yeah, just kind of going day by day. Otherwise, with the music, and... love it, man. <laughs> yeah, no, like it, it's once again, you know, like it, this is this is like it feels to me like this is kind of like an event album for the both of y'all. Just really, just kind of like a, like I said, like a fire and ice thing, and the both of y'all met, and then you go back on your paths, and <laughs> you, know, you, you, you know, you know, like we get we get four or five over here, and one over there you know like it's it's uh i i just i just i just love seeing i love seeing them two things just kind of come together and like how it didn't just it's just how it informed each other and like how it made something as great as this but a full um, year of ours creative life so and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh man well, we, 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 yeah no like he'll like we're gonna be able to let off some steam so i'm excited That's, to see yeah you know, I'm, I'm excited to see how that turns out but um for the both of y'all um it's i think this is only the second time i've ever asked this to two people at once but um if your lives were movies what would they be about it could either be together or separate if you want oh, damn. oh. hold on shit <laughs> yeah, that's a great question what would they be about shit all right can you go <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm thinking. Damn, bro, I don't even know, man. But oh. man, I <laughs> I don't even know if I can call it, man. I don't even know <laughs> if my life was a movie. Yeah, I think right now I I couldn't call it because there's so much, so so much I have left to to live and learn. So yeah, that's fair. That's weird. I'm over here trying to find like a very good answer, but like I truly don't <laughs> think I don't think I I don't know, man. Look yeah. at it. I want my life to be make a make a Ghibli biopic about me. That's okay. All, that's all I'm asking. Make a Ghibli mm-hmm. biopic. A Ghibli a Ghibli inspired biopic about me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I yeah, so like if I were yeah, so like if I were to choose, I would like if I were to take a song from this project and like flesh it out into something feature length i would probably pick either harbingers or all in the wind and further like the like 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 those i guess three technically songs like those are the three that i can imagine just like being or capitulation because capitulation is my second favorite like i love i could i could i could i could i could live inside i could live inside all of these beats but like that's the first one that really caught me but yeah no like i think y'all um i think y'all created something really immersive with this project and i'm just excited to go back and live in it for the rest of the year and you know like um you know, like i'd imagine people listening are also you know like if, if you haven't if you haven't tapped in go to find living born buy it on bandcamp this is going to come out after bandcamp friday happens but like go support them anyway they deserve your money they deserve your bread um thank y'all man this was this thank was you. man thank you so much dude oh Bro. like it, Mm. Crazy. The bu- bu- bucket bucket list type uh definitely definitely type situation here. Much love, man. No, uh, definitely. It, it's it's yeah, like like I said, it's just it's it's just been nice to see y'all's progression and to be able to and, and to be able to like give it the spotlight that I was able to give it and just to like get to talk to y'all, man. Like we're all people. 
at the end of the day and like you're both like really early on and it's already apparent just like the talent and the uh the vision that both of y'all have and you know like once again like on some you know like on some like cold hot fire ice dueling dragon shit like that's kind of like what you know like especially talking to y'all now and really like digging into your processes like like I'm just really excited to see where that takes you together or excuse me separately and together like I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm mean, like I'm sure more is going to happen in, in the future but like just for, yeah. like it, it's it's a uh, like it's cool it's cool to kind of see it's cool to see the two comets pass each other in the atmosphere Definitely. you know one time thank you thank you so much yeah, yeah no. thanks for listening shout out to y'all for making it this far and shout out to all the black people listening too because y'all really impeccable don't forget to like subscribe and tell a friend to come through next time one